Okay. You're day late, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> day late and a dog <laughs> short. Dog <laughs> short. <laughs> Movies at an after party. This is when we hit. If you have not seen this film, we suggest that you do so before listening any further. We got spoilers, trivia, and opinions like crazy, and we can't wait to share them. Uh, good, bad, new, old, weird, or gross. We pass judgment on them all today. A man ain't a man unless he's running game. My name is Steve. I'm here with uh, Greg and Christian. Uh, today we're covering Rounders, which is Greg's pick. It is. Ah. Uh, did you did you like your movie? Uh, did I like my pick? I did. Uh, you know, it was. Uh, it's been a while since I had seen it, and then uh, rewatching it, it was. It was. Uh, I don't know. I think a good choice. I really like the the card aspect, and not just the card, kind of the whole evolution of uh, of uh, Matt Damon's character. You know, uh, I really liked uh, Malkovich in yes. it. Teddy KGB. Teddy you know? KGB. Teddy with his with his thing of Oreos. You know. Oh, <laughs> I know more than one person that can spew this movie off the top of their head, and uh, it's it's absolutely epic in some circles. Mm-hmm. I, I have I have a, a little quiz time for you guys. Okay. Quiz time. Quiz time. Um, in the context of poker, what does rags mean? Oh fuck! No. Gr- garbage hand. I'll go with that. Ding ding ding! <laughs> Spoiler alert: I don't actually like poker. <laughs> Um, in context of poker, what is Cowboys? Those are Kings. Kings? Yes. Ding, ding, ding. In the context of poker, what is high society? $10,000. Yeah. No. No, 30. No. no. Three stacks of high society. Yeah, it's it's 10 grand each. Isn't it? Okay, it can be broken down like this. Uh, a stack is traditionally, but not always, 20. And high society is traditionally, but not always, the highest chip in the house, which is usually $500. So a stack of 500 chips, a stack of 20 $500 chips is 10 grand. Three stacks of high society is... 30 grand. 30 grand. Um, I have one more. I have one one more. Uh, Rake. What is rake? Oh, that's what the... uh, The house takes away from you. takes out of the pile. Yeah. That's right, because you're not playing against the house. That's it. That's the end of my game. Did you like playing? <laughs> <laughs> there was too much jargon in this movie. I didn't understand half of it. I did. Did it feel like it dragged you in and made you feel like you were a part of something, or did it feel like it was walling you out? It was walling me out, okay. and, and 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 I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care to learn what he was talking about. Okay, he's talking about cards. Yeah, he says he said something about cards. I don't know. I guess that hand's better than the other one. Yeah. I like it the other way. Like, I'm not a great <laughs> card player, but I really like the aspect and how they explain the whole thing. And I think this came out back in the day, just when, uh, you know, there was a lull in the sports at that time. So poker took an upswing, too. I, I had that question. I was like, like there was a time, there was a time when, before... Like, Poker was on TV all the time. Yes, and that happened because there was like lockout in baseball or lockout in hockey or something like okay. that. And then because there was no, there was striking, poker, you know, got catapulted into sort of mainstream. Mm. And at that point, that's when they had all these poker and then, it, you know, they built their momentum from that. And I think the movie came out at this time. I could be wrong. Let me know. Comments, right? Absolutely. Um, sure. Absolutely. And, and it's it's... Like a lot of people love to love to put um, luck onto poker, but I guess this movie is trying trying to convey that this it's not luck. this is an intellectual yeah. game. You can actually get good at it and grind out a good uh, and a living, which is which is shocking to me. And uh, Matt says something that's very interesting. He says that the same five people end up uh, in the in the Masters of Poker every year. So, uh, mm-hmm. there has to be something to it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It was, um, it, it felt like it drove, dragged me into it. Um, um, <laughs> what was really funny is you see him, you know, uh, he gives up his law career, which 
everyone looks at is like, are you crazy? But I mean, by the same token, he's not in it. Like, yeah, and he's, he's he's passionate about his poker, and you know, I easily foresee see him getting way more, you know, enjoyment and money out of that because he's <laughs> much better at it, right? But well, I, he's I happy. That's that's definitely has value. I understood that he he couldn't he didn't feel the passion for law school. He was doing it for some other reason, and he wasn't sure why. What I was confused is that he has. His name was Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He has his uh, a, what looks like a very large apartment in New York or New Jersey. He's got a beautiful girlfriend, and he also needs to get fucked by an Oreo, Oreo eating Russian. Oh yeah, the last time he sticks it in you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like um, I think you, I think you should probably be satisfied without the Oreo eating Russian. Mm. Yeah. Well, you gotta have the uh, you gotta have the antagonist, right? Yeah. I guess. But it's true. Why would he fuck with the mob? I mean, really. I mean, that has nothing to do with poker. At the end of the day, he I didn't guess... fuck with the mob, though, right? It wasn't yeah. a worm. He ended up he ended up be eating that guy's debt. And yeah, but at the very right? beginning of the movie, the opening of the movie... He loses $30,000. Uh, he loses $30,000. He, yeah. he goes to try and win money from the Russian mob. Well, he, goes oh. to, he goes to the mob because they have the underground poker. Right, yeah. and it's like it's illegal outside of a casino, right? And if you want that, you know, this was again back before it was, you know, big and mainstream kind of deal. So, I mean, when they do go to the casino and you see them, and I really like that the analogy. It's like, yeah, all the sharks are swimming together, but they're not eating other sharks. They just gobble up all the the tourists, the tourists who are the fish, right? And that's uh, the terminology they use, and I think that's hilarious, but. I can see how that's true, right? Like, why would you play against someone that, you know, you're throwing your money against this guy who knows what the heck he's doing versus, like, mom and pop who are on vacation want to throw a little money around thinking it's all luck when it's crazy amount of skill, right? And stats. This, I was confused. I thought I had seen this movie before. It turns out I hadn't. But there's another movie where uh, two guys go into a poker game and the bad guys cheat somehow. They take pictures of their cards or something. And it isn't until much later that they learn they got cheated on. Okay. Do you know what movie I'm talking about? Because mm. that's what I thought this movie was. And I okay. kept waiting for the reveal that Teddy KGB had cheated him. But it wasn't. It didn't turn out that way. No. Apparently he was a straight player. No. Yeah. Worm's the bad guy. Yeah. Wor- worm. <laughs> He's and, and halfway through the movie, I'm yeah. like, why are you going to bat for this asshole? Yeah. Ten minutes out of prison... You drop him off at a place, and then he runs up debt in your name. Yeah. And then when he wins back more than eight times or four times more than he borrowed, doesn't pay. He doesn't pay the debt back. Yeah. Oh, those are the worst kinds of friends. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Now, um, I've I've heard of a card mechanic. Have you ever heard of a card mechanic? Well, that's a cheater, that's, uh, a person who deals incorrectly. He- to place um, uh, cards where he wants them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, magicians can do this yeah. um, if, if they're good enough with cards, but usually you have to be exclusively a card magician to, to get that good. Uh, but, yeah, a mechanic can put any card anywhere in the deck it, he wants it to be. Hmm. And, uh, and and then they, they describe Worm as a mechanic. Okay. And when I remember... Hearing that word the first time I watched the movie a long time ago, and not really knowing what it was, but mm-hmm. I know what it is now because um, I've been paying a lot more attention to uh, Penn and Teller's Fool Us, and, oh, yeah. and every once in a while they'll get a card mechanic on there and and just like doing some crazy shit. And so I've learned the term. I've learned the term now. So that was that was fun. That was fun. I find it weird that the the cops would beat the shit out of them, which I enjoyed. Uh, that you know, it's like, hey, you got. Caught cheating in a game full of cops, and you're gonna get shit kicked out of you. Yeah. I'm su- what do you think's gonna happen? I'm surprised here? that uh, they then threw you out. I figured they would just be like, okay, we're gonna say that we found you guys fighting each other down by the river, and now you're gonna spend the night in jail. Mm. I just don't think they want the heat, so that's why well, they took yeah. all their money and beat them up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they didn't want anybody saying that they took our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they want those guys to disappear, which is what they'll what they'll do is <laughs> not come back. Yeah, never come back. Oh, he was he was doing so well. So, Matt was doing so well. He so was, winning. A, was he a good cop, bone cop, bad cop, or what's going on? There? <laughs> well, they were cops that didn't want to be cops at the time, and and if they they book them and be like, uh, all right, we gotta we gotta write paperwork on these guys and figure out where they came from and. 
I've heard that cops are the most rowdy bunch. <laughs> I, I, I took a party bus once and, and I was talking to the owners, who was also the driver. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, the worst, the, the cops are the worst. <laughs> No, they'll do everything on the bus that you're not supposed to. Because <laughs> who's going to arrest them? Because right? who's going to arrest them? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'd fall into that category if I ever became a cop. <coughs> um, uh, should we get into this trivia? I don't know. Oh, I... well, yeah, yeah, I got another question. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so those two people, Joe and uh, Mike, were mm -hmm. students yeah. on student incomes. Yes. Yeah. They live in that nice apartment. Yes. Who pays for that? Well, haven't you ever seen... Uh... Friends? No, not Friends. It's it's one of those shows, you know? Like, I'm trying to find a house. My husband's a sandwich artist. Oh, and right, right. On, yeah, say, uh... Uh, our budget's $1.2 Like, it's, yeah, yeah. it's believable. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect, perfectly plausible. <laughs> and, then, and then he asks if, she, if he can borrow her Jeep to go pick up Worm. Yeah. And then she leaves him after he gambles and lies about it. Yeah. And then for the rest of the movie, they're driving around in another car. Whose car is that? Whose car is that? I don't know. So they afford... They, on their, it's not the truck, right? Because that's Kanish's truck. That's right? Kanish's delivery truck. And it's not the Jeep that's hers. It's some black sedan. Just a car. Just a car. That's really awesome. Maybe it's Worm's car. Maybe he used a screwdriver to get it. I don't know. And then they drove this hot car all over upstate New York to... Con these... Continuity area. Yeah. I don't know. And now, I've, I didn't notice that. But I can say that um, if somebody gets goes into law school or medical school and they have a good chance of graduating, banks will throw money at them. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, "Here, sign this loan." Yeah, maybe in the maybe in the I mean, they, yeah, they'll they'll put them into loans into yeah. debt. So, for... like, if he couldn't have if he if he could have just stayed away from picking up worm, he could have been a a lawyer and then had poker. As his side gig, and he made money on money on money. Well, then, yeah, then he could have gone. He yeah. could have joined those. He could have gone into law school, joined those those uh, judge games, <laughs> judge games, cleaned yeah. out the judges once a month. <laughs> oh man, he'd never he he'd keep his bar license active, but he'd never actually practice because he would just earn all his money taking it from judges. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> but he they wouldn't mind because he's one of them. That's true. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I think he he could have done well if he stayed in law school. Oh, but I want. I think the point of it is like, pursue your happy, pursue your happiness, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, that is a, a theme in um, Google Hunting, where uh, Matt Damon drives off into the sunset, where he's going to pursue happiness with uh, what's her face, Mimi, Mimi Driver. Oh man, and and so it's been forever since there is some I parallels like there. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, the dude's trying to find his passion, and he's like an Indian savant at a certain thing, and uh, and then. It's a lot, yeah. Well, I don't know, genius, maybe. A genius. They, well, it, he's a this, poker genius. In he's this, a poker yeah. genius in this, and he's a, just a G, regular, just an ordinary, uh, ordinary genius. genius. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and Goodwill Hunting. Uh, anyway, I, I, that was an interesting thing. Should we get into this trivia? Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. Uh, Worm was originally supposed to smoke, but uh, Edward Norton is an avid non-smoker and, and thus refused. Uh, good for you. I think I also think it was funnier that he won all those cigarettes off those guys and threw them in the garbage. <laughs> did he throw them in the garbage? Yeah, yeah, on his way out of, yeah, his way yeah, out of the yeah, prison yeah. door. Just tossed them. He threw them. Yeah. He's like, yeah. they were what all like, you dick. don't. Even, they, yeah, he, the, the guys he lost who lost them were all mad at him. Like, you don't even smoke. Well, but, yeah, but I can use them to trade for other things. But that was. And then they deal. call him. And they're like, okay, okay, uh, worm, you're getting out. And they're like, so you're taking our cigarette? Like in 15 minutes, you can go buy cigarettes at the convenience store. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but you lost them. <coughs> and he throws them in the garbage. But that was Don't his be a thing, baby. right? That was his Don't thing. He smokes to give to, to give to smokes. other people to trade yeah. for favors yeah. to trade for. Oh yeah. man, yeah, he has, he has to win to these shyster, people right? To lose to those He's, people. They set him up as the shyster yeah. from the very beginning, for sure. Oh man, and that's what the whole thing about running game is. Like, oh, if you if you don't have an angle, mm -hmm. you're a sucker, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And some people freaking really buy into that, and it's uh, it's a little sad. Sad. Yeah. Uh, early on, Mike is seen taking money out of a poker book called Super System, which is written by poker legend Doyle Brunson. He later pulls quotes from this book with the lines, Texas Hold'em is the Cadillac of poker games, and the trick to no limit is to put a man to a decision for all his chips. Hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, Matt Damon said in an interview that getting John Malkovich was a big deal for the film. So much so that on the first take, John Malkovich did a very cartoonish and over-the-top performance, at the end of which the whole crew applauded and praised him for how brilliant it was. At which point Matt Damon looked John Malkovich very confused. John Malkovich, seeing him looking confused, leaned over and said, I'm a terrible actor. Matt Damon said John Malkovich was trying to show him that if you get to the point where no one gives you a straight answer, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Malkovich actually did a terrible Russian accent. <laughs> But he did say, uh, and it, I, I had to rewind it a couple times, because uh, he says something like, like, Tavyomat, which means fuck your mother. Okay. And the subtitles in English said, okay, Mike, or something like that, that kind of sounded the same. Like, hold on. And I'm like, that's not what he said. And then I looked at the Spanish titles, and he didn't say that. They didn't put those on the screen, because that's not what he said. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. The Spanish of, there's no lying in Spanish. Yeah, there's and it's blank in Spanish. He yeah. says something and then he says something else. And in between, there's a blank space because that's he says "fuck your mother" in Russian, <laughs> and we don't say that in Spanish. Yeah, in subtitles <laughs> or anything. Yeah. That just doesn't happen. Nope. The hand that Michael uses to beat Teddy KGB in the final game against each other is flopping a, a nut straight. Which was a eight of spade and a nine of spade, which is the same move that Johnny Chan used in the game that Michael had been watching on his VCR midway through the film in his apartment while he was drinking. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of the term flopping a nut straight, and I thought maybe you guys could enlighten me. Nope. Uh, I know what a straight is. <laughs> and um, I, maybe. Um, I don't know if spade has anything to do with the nut. No, it's the nut is the two cards in between, right? So you have the, and then. Okay. Five, six, blank, blank. Nine, whatever, ten. Whatever, yeah. you know. oh. I hope that's right. So, there was something about a, a blind, no, double the blind or some, I forget what the, there was other jargon in there. I was like, I don't know what that means. Hmm. <coughs> um, well, when when KGB and and Mike were facing off at the final, the final game, they they had said some rules were. Um, no usually, splashing the pot. That's well, that was that was scattering it all over the place, yeah. right? Okay, because that's a show of disrespect. They're like, "Come on, bitch!" Okay. Isn't the blind the ante? The blind? Yeah. Yeah, they have the small blind and the big blind, or whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Double yeah. blinds that eventually it doubles after so often, so that eventually you can't just flop. Because if you just keep you keep folding, you'll eventually get eaten by the blinds. That's what they okay. do every so often. They increase oh them. yes, so you have to bet. Um, the the blind, the big blind has to has to bet. It has to give some of his money to the pot. Yeah, it just it forces people to. If you're going to sit in. there, you have to be. You have to be playing, right? You have to be. Mm -hmm. Like if you got a table of six, you get four guys that don't have to. Then you get one guy that does the small blind, which is half. Of the big blind, and the big blind is double, or or is the the yeah, twice you, twice as big as the small, and then eventually you go around so often, then they double the amount, so then the big blind becomes double what it used to be, okay. so that eventually, it it will cause someone to win because if someone just keeps folding and folding, the blinds will eat out all their chips. So usually, that's the thing, right? You try and you try and wait for your time till you get your. The hand that you're your your double for. aces, and then you know. Yeah, because if you have a big enough table with enough people, um, then actually you, you're not you're not one of the blinds, so mm -hmm. you you don't actually have to bet if you don't like your cards. Yeah. But if as soon as you are the blind, you have to bet. Um, is that is that wrong? That's all I had. Do you have any questions, Greg? Greg, do you have any questions? Questions about router? No, I'm good. All right. I don't know. Should uh, I have questions? Do you have questions that you need answered? Well, I don't know. What? What? Mike blew through 30 grand and Joe stuck around. And then he uh, he got back into gambling and she left him. And she he said, Mike said, She's being smart. She's like dumping a shit hand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which is um, which is really interesting. She was getting rid of him because he couldn't get rid of Warren. Ultimately, I guess. Right? Like he was, 
he was standing up for his buddy who then basically left him high and dry. So that's why he had to face KGB alone. And then he ended up beating him. Because he did it twice, right? Because he had to beat him once <coughs> to be square. Yeah. Like to be zero. And then he he doubled or nothing. And then they he beat him again to get get his money back that he lost to him the, the first, first time. The first time. So that was the whole point. Like he's back to where he used to be. And now he can go on and, you know, because they talk about you. One of your trivia is talking about Chen, right? Like that's, that was his goal, right? He sat he down to, with him he, he, he wants Vegas. to Vegas and do the, He wants to, you know, you know hang, hang his hat up yeah. in the mirage with the office of any professional. Well, I mean, like, it's like anybody, right? Like if he had, if he had been, if he had gone through law school, been the lawyer, he'd want to be a judge, right? That's where this, you know, this is the next level of poker, right? You, you poker and whatever. They show all the other guys, they're working rooms and doing all that, and then getting ahead. Like, Kanish there, the guy that's, I know, his mentor-ish, he, he feeds his family playing poker, right? <laughs> you know, so... It's true. It's so, true. Like you said, it's, it's weird, but stats-wise, you can do it. And I think that's why I picked it as a movie. I found that very interesting. You know, it's like... An, you you make a job or do it you know I mean the movie does it well but whatever any anyway so no questions though all right very cool very cool um this was a good cover I I think I'm glad we we checked this box it was uh, a movie that needed to some needed some conversation so thank you Greg <laughs> yeah thank you you're welcome <laughs> uh. Uh, my name is Steve. You're watching Primarily Critical. This is Christian. This is Greg. Um, we have a store now. Mm -hmm. You should go check it out. We have some sweet merch. Uh, so you can peruse that. Mm -hmm. uh, PrimarilyCritical.com. You should be able to find it there. And um, um, I don't know. We're all over the podcasters, po podcasting apps, and the and the what else were we on? Twitter, Twitter Facebook, Discord. YouTube. Discord, we have a Discord. Man, we're running out of fingers here. Please, reach out and touch us. You have to tell us what we're watching next week. Oh, yes, That's right. Next Monday, next week, Monday at noon. This one's special. This one is special. That's right. We're covering Art of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, we are in contact with the movie producer, and uh, and we decided we're gonna. We're gonna do Art of the Dead, and uh, so uh, it's it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Um, uh, it, it, this just feels a little bit more personal. It's like, you know, like we're in, we're in touch with Hollywood. <laughs> um, anyway, off off Hollywood. I, I can't wait to to, to talk about it. Uh, I, I hope it's good. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. We're gonna find out.